defensive unit, it all starts with them. Starts with the goalkeeper and goes up the spine of this team. So we are underway under the lights here at Spry. It's the last non-conference regular season matchup between both of these squads. Wake Forest Demon Deacons, the Robert Morris Colonials from the Horizon League. And that table is very tight as well. The Deacons do not want to look ahead to their Friday night match against Notre Dame. So when we talked to Coach Muse today, Cedric, he said this is priority number one, and we're going to come at this one like it's Notre Dame. Well, and he expounded on that quite a bit. You know, these midweek games really make your season. You know, a lot of teams gave examples of some teams have dropped midweek games and have really hurt their RPI. And uh, th this team approaches every game the same way. Really impressed with the approach. They're not going to drop the level. You know, on, on paper, obviously, a, a different opponent than we had with Chapel Hill the other night. But they're going to approach this game, try to put it away as early as possible. One person to keep an eye on who's not in attendance, but uh, someone's going to be subbing in for him is uh, Garrison Tubbs taking the night off. Travis Smith Jr., the freshman, their outstanding recruit. He will get the start. Remember, he stepped in for Prince Ponza earlier this season while well, he steps in for Garrison Tubbs tonight. Here's Kojima as Kojima pulled that one back and let it ride. Just went a little too high in over to the right, away from the frame. So Wake Forest already testing the keeper and the early doors of this one. There's Gilly pinching in. Gilly planned on going to Appalachian State to follow Jason O'Keefe. Jason O'Keefe then went to Robert Morris. So Gilly twins actually had one year at UNCG and then followed O'Keefe to Robert Morris. Of course, O'Keefe left past season and then uh, Jonathan Potter came in as the new head coach. Coming from Presbyterian. Very good seasons he had with Presbyterian. And like we said in the open, Cedric, he is just kept uh, on track and kept his success. It's working. And Jonathan Potter, a Winston-Salem native who was actually coached by Bobby Muse for Twin City, a former club here. And ironically, Cedric, I coached him too when he was in high school. So it just makes you feel old. That, that is clearly, clearly <laughs> the reason for his success. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. There is Jonathan Potter, Potter his first season. And Coach Potter's instilled quite a bit of confidence in this team. Yeah. You, know, you, you talk to him, and, and he describes his team as hardworking, resilient. They're very tough to beat. They're balanced. You know, we can see that from, what, three ties in a row. You know, they, they don't concede. They scored, what, a minute into their last match? And that was right. Was one of the quickest goals in Robert Morris history. Jonathan Potter, who got the job in December of 2022. That means you got to quickly go to work, get ready for, of course, the spring season, and then before you know it, it'll be July. And I think a good testament to Potter as a coach is the fact that he didn't have a lot of players leave. They, they stuck around. They, they trusted what he had in store, and it's obviously working as Robert Morris was picked to finish in the low part of the Horizon League, and they are the best scoring team in that league and one of the best defensive teams in that league, the Horizon League. We can already see from the onset first five minutes, this is probably going to be a little slower pace of a game. You know, both teams want to possess coming off games over the weekend, not to look ahead, but, you know, both have big matches coming up. They're going to fill each other up, knock it around. They both want to get numbers up and possess as high as possible. This Wake Forest team, and we saw it from onset, they're going to, they're going to really press. Their line of confrontation is going to be really high. They're going to use this immaculate defense to try to create offensive opportunities. That's right, Cedric here. Exactly right. They've got Oakland coming up. 
Right now, Robert Morris is tied for fourth in that on the table with Green Bay. Two points behind Purdue Fort Wayne. So that's tight two, and both teams have to kind of have that hyper focus for this match and not look ahead. It's hard to believe it's been 30 years that these two teams matched up. In that matchup, though, 30 years ago, Robert Morris won 1 0. Here's Forbes trying to break through the double team. Forbes had an excellent game on Saturday night against North Carolina. There's Flax. He was intending to send that one through to Rold Mitchell. Rold Mitchell with his eighth goal of the season. That was all Wake Forest needed. And that rivalry between the Deacons and the Tar Heels. Gilly trying to go over the top and try to find Yude. Kosi Yude, two of the central forwards for Jonathan Potter. Ogara. Slides it over to Escribano. Escribano with space as the Deacons slowly, slowly working their way into the attacking third and building. Linking together some passes before they make their surge into that final third. And Panza, good ball played to Forbes. Forbes left foot. This is sent on a one-timer, and what a shot by Kojima that just again went over the bar, but they work on that many, many, many times in training, and that is that diagonal ball with a runner coming on, and Kojima just sent it a little too high. And Ty, that's really indicative of that last series of how this team wants to build. They wants to really knock it and possess in the middle and get expansive and find a winger and exactly how they scored the goal on Saturday that diagonal across the box Flax high in the air corner there's Robert Morris the Colonials trying to quickly get up the pitch here on that clearance but Wallent who is hanging back and once again start building this time from the center of the pitch Good vision, which connects with number 14, Jelani Forbes. Forbes, another delicious ball. Who's there? It's Kojima. Kojima inside the 18, left-footed shot. And that one's just maybe two feet shy of that far stick. Ty, there's a reason Jelani Forbes leads this team in assists. We can see they've overloaded this left side in the last two attacks, and he's played great balls across the box. Kojima already with two great looks. Preseason All-ACC pick. After a very, very good year last year, but his season ended prematurely with an injury. And the Deacons never were the same. But he is fully healthy, and he's been that way since the opening night. He's got an engine. I mean, he's a true box-to-box -box midi. We see him back defensively now, but... He's the guy who's going to put it, put in. Ooh, what a shot. It's a very nice shot. He's the guy who's going to put in that work to make sure he's there for his teammates. And uh, that was a sneaky probing yeah, ball right there. That was a sneaky. What's this created by? Who else? Anas Adan, who was able to create that on that, would have been the assist. I think it was Gabe Norris who sent that one. So Robert Morris kind of woke up that defense for Wake Forest that we're not just going to sit back. We also have some offense, too. That's Kojima. 50-50 ball challenge and won by Prince and Ponza. Once again, Wake Forest working on that left channel with Forbes. Forbes. 
connects with Flax. Flax with a shot, and it skips off the pitch. Smacked down by the keeper, Gorgani. And it will be another corner for the Demon Deacons. Once again, the corner will be taken by number 18, Cooper Flax. Already two corners coming into this match. At 75, so 77 to the opponent's 41 corners on the air. Flax curling that one low with the inside of his right foot. There is Flax. Cooper almost came up with a golazo on Saturday night. Just missed it. A lot of these shots were on frame. They just couldn't quite get it in the back of the net. They only needed one, and that was Roald Mitchell. But I think anybody could have scored that just because of the service ball by Baba Niang. It was right on a platter. Roald Mitchell with his eighth goal of the year. There's a foul that will give the Colonials free kick. Our referees, J.C. Griggs, along with Michael Donovan, Eric Usher, Alex Tensi. That's our crew tonight. I see a professional foul there from Cooper Flax. Slow down that attack. Very similar to how Robert Moore scored their first goal against Green Bay. They sent one into the box. It banged around. And was able to find the back of the net to make it 1-0. This is a good play. Looking for Gilly. Gilly running on. And good recovery by Escobano. Now double team between Wallint and Cummins. And Cummins somehow picks the pocket, but still... In the attacking third, the Colonials still poaching. This is chipped up in the air, maybe intended for Uday. And it wasn't too far from connecting with his head. Well, we, we see an example right there of really the mannerisms that make this defense so successful. When, when they lose it, they immediately repress. They immediately regroup. They, they, they swarm and, and immediately look to attack their possession. Here's Kojima into a pocket of space. Inserts a pass to Cooper Flax as Deeks try to get some numbers forward. A very rare pass taken away by Jelani Forbes as Flax rushes on. And it's out of bounds as some of the great hustle by Anas Hadran. Trying to chase that one down. And you mentioned a rare mistake by Forbes. But really, it was Anas Hadron closing down that space and, and closing the lane, and he, he really created that. And we talked about his work rate and versatility. These are the things he does in the middle of the pitch to make this team successful. As Kojima scanning. Travis Smith Jr. who gets the start, but already plays like a starter. After having a lot of experience in the beginning of the season, here's Jelani Forbes. Another good ball, but it's cut out. He can still right in the neighborhood. Last touch by Escribano goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw for the Colonials. Uday who comes over from South Carolina as a transfer. And it's six foot. Big threat inside the box, and that's a good ball that's just cut out. That was intended to find Uday. That was McLaughlin who came up with that service ball, and Robert Morris Looking feisty on the offensive side. We've gone end to end. Now here's Forbes. I'd say quite feisty. And, and they're having some success building out of the back. They're doing a good, good job finding these interior mids. They're getting some inside outside action as we see right now. Now that ball was lumped up probably a little prematurely, but good job winning the second ball there. Uday was ready to pounce on that one. And the foul will bring it back. For a free kick. Play just about 15 minutes of this match. Four shots for the Demon Deacons. One shot for Robert Morris. 
But uh, Ronald Morris has had some trips into then attacking third. Now, this is a talented group, and they're most certainly approaching this game as an equal. We can see. Escobato goes for the long ball, sends it near Wallet. And he will keep it in play. Looking for some targets inside the box. While it's a little step over that's taken away. Now Robert Morris building from the back. The wall in. And a draw once again. He, he buzzes around, finds himself over there, wins that ball back, plays a good outlet to a teammate. Robert Morris pinching in a little bit and not quite using the width there as Gillies moved in, as well as Koa. And what we'll notice in this 4 4 2 with Robert Morris, Wake is such a dangerous counter attack team. Ty, what you just mentioned is the key is, is those mid interior mids and everyone condensing. Travis Smith Jr., a little heavy touch, and it's taken away by McLaughlin. And McLaughlin heads off in that left channel going up against Cummins. Thought about sending it over to Norris. Okara immediately turning and staring right at Forbes. He sends it and connects. Both squads really filling each other out, but not scared to make some risks. Getting inside the 18. You would think someone the likes of Robert Morris would be a little timid, but uh, they have not been timid at all, Cedric. They have really tried to push the envelope, especially on the offensive side, and then they've been able to get their numbers back defensively. 100% correct. These guys came to play, and again, it starts with Coach Potter. You know, Look at that turn. It's a beautiful turn. Kojima plays it out to Wallen. Here's Cubbage. Kojima is such a pivotal point of this offense. Everything runs through him, keeps it very fluid. And his stats might not show it, but yes, he does open a lot of passing lanes as well as number 14, Jelani Forbes. Jelani Forbes is such, so a, such a weapon with those balls across the box. I mean, he's, he's one of those guys where as a teammate, you have to anticipate every time he's going to win his 1v1 battle and get to the line. And you have to have crashing runs closing in because it's coming across as we've seen evidence three or four times already in this match. A short option will be Forbes as Flax will take it and give it to Forbes and sent right over to Wall in, but an offside flag is up. I believe it's on Flax for being in an offside position. That's a good gotta job be, of that. <laughs> Robert Morris line stepping out quickly. <laughs> you got, yeah, that was uh, pretty tight for them to immediately step and throw a Flax offside. And that's just great, great tactical recognition of... of Situ of the moment where you're at on the pitch, especially against a team that's talented. Travis Smith Jr. not shy at all either, getting the start for Garrison Tubbs. Most likely looking at the future on that center back position for Bobby Muse. Good distribution with Kojima to Forbes. Forbes will this time work. Left foot shot, and he sent that one. Did it get flicked up over the bar by the keeper, he didn't miss that one by much. And once again, he's going to win his, his 1v1 battle. And we see the long touch and just the change of pace and acceleration. And Gorgani was able to knock that away. So, yes, another corner kick. And Gorgani is at a very, very busy night so far. And Swallen comes in. Flax goes out. Another senior leader that uh, was usual starter, but coming in off the bench to show you the depth of Wake Forest. This is a good curling ball. Roald Mitchell had a foot on it, actually had a head on it, then a foot on it, and still stopped by Gorgani. That's one he's going to want back, especially after such a clean clinical finish on Saturday night. He, he was in there, I think, dropped. Yeah, <laughs> just couldn't get right-footed. 
And you mentioned Swallen just stepped in. We saw what he did Saturday night in calming the match down. Such a presence. We see him right now commanding the ball. He really settles this team down, opens up space, typically plays the right ball. But his off-the-ball movement is what really triggers and makes him so successful. Yeah, you got the calm storm of Swallen and then just the motor and impact that Kojima as the center of the pitch. That is best of both worlds. It's a potent midfield. Yep. There's Escribano. There's Forbes. Trying to invent something again. As O'Gara. Swallet. Forbes. Left foot. Back stick. Good. And there it is. Rob Mitchell with his ninth goal. And look who created that. Swallow's been in the game for what, two minutes? Great checking run to open himself up. Slip Forbes through. Great ball to that forward post. That is a clinical goal. That's just connecting the dots. And all you have to do is really put a foot on there. Of course, it's number nine to finish it up. But Forbes, it was only a matter of time before that was going to finally connect with number nine. This time it does. And the Deeks lead 1-0. 24 minutes remaining in the first half. Ninth goal of the season for Roll. And, and what's so impressive is the off the ball movement of this team in general. That's a perfect example of a third man running concept when you don't have the ball, putting yourself in a position to finish for a teammate. So Jelani Forbes with his sixth assist of the season. Coming into the night, he was fourth in the ACC in that department. Couldn't have scripted that one any better. That's right. That is. It, it, you, you being a coach, former player too, I mean, that's where you sit on the sidelines and you just keep your mouth shut and just say, that's how we drew it up. Good job, guys. <laughs> yeah, good job, guys. <laughs> Glad we covered that one in training yesterday. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, the Colonials, not bothered by it. They want to attack. Just cut out. Good chance by Mbuthia. It did have a quick look, but it was immediately blocked. Over the top, they're going to use the speed of Wallin. Wallin off to the races, gives it over to Rold Mitchell, and the left footed foot just couldn't get quite underneath that bar. But another brilliant play by Wallin. So, and of course, Rold Mitchell, the focal point up top. So that's the first time we've seen these Deacons go, go that over the top ball. We'll see how the game changes now with the 1 0 lead. They'll be a little bit more aggressive. That was almost in, two touches. That's where you almost have to look and see. Did the did Coach Buse say two touch? See how fast you can get up the pitch. Good press there by Robert Moores. Alfin finds Prince and Ponson. Uh, Robert Moores has to be careful if they're going to press. They have to press together. You know, we saw a lot of space open up. In between that forward and midfield line right there. A little disjointed on the press. And this Wake Forest team can punish you. Robert Morris in that 4-4-2. Coach, in that 4-4-2, you want the two, your two center forwards to kind of go at the two center backs? Is that kind of how you would? You would they do, and they, and they should be in tandem. And typically one, one is directing the other, and they can either be – they can't be flat. You know, they, there's got to be some depth there, and the communication has to come from the midfield. There's one touch. Here's Ogara lining up, and he sent that one sky high. It's, gonna, it's destined to come someday for Ogara. He's got a foot. He can send it from that distance. I mean, he got a little too anxious. There's Coach Muse. Ninth season. He's Wake Forest head coach. and Another double-digit season in the win column. I think uh, the Wake Forest faithful have become a little bit spoiled with the success that Coach Muse has had and especially with Coach Vidovich and what he started here that you know 14 wins last season and Cedric that was considered a dud 14 wins well, just a, just a, a testament yep. to you know this is by any metric I think been the most successful program in the country under his, his tenure and, and you're right with uh 
with expectations, you know, with talent comes expectations. And, you know, that's something he lives with every day and him and his staff and these players know what they're coming into, that they're expected to be a double digit win team and be a, go deep in the NCAA tournament every single season. Kojima, a oh, nice turn, pulled it back. Plays the support with Ogaru, and Ogaru sprays it out to the right. Overlapping run was Cummins, but Wallent will keep it. One touch. A little too heavy, maybe, from Swallent. Debbie Swallent uh, usually is able to finally put a little nice little touch, but uh, Swallent, that one rolled up his foot a little bit. Had the right idea, though, the one touch on there in that corner. Such a cerebral player. Old Mitchell, always, always, there. always has a plan before the ball comes to his feet. A extra shove on Afawubu. Another professional foul. Stop that attack. Right part of the field. Akragata. Robato puts himself in that tough corner, and Forbes goes down, and he's able to get that whistle. Be blown by the head referee. Afawubo is nine starts coming into this match and one assist. Last year had 12 starts, 13 appearances. He's also integral to the success of the back line last year for Robert Morris and of course this year. Just under 20 to go in the first half. Roald Mitchell's made it 1-0. His ninth goal of the year and he'll look for his 10th. And this is a good an attempt by Wallins. It's deflected and Cedric, we got ourselves another corner. We do, it's becoming a trend and this Wake Forest team can flip gears so quickly and go from a, a defensive formation and, and just break out and his counter is lethal. So Garino will come in for Rold Mitchell. Gabe Morris goes out. And we've got another corner. Cummins has moved over to this left side, clipped up in the area. It's gonna be tough. And Bob and Yang. An offside flag goes up. Everybody just kind of waiting for that ball to like fall down. It's almost who, yeah, who wants to score this one. <laughs> <laughs> almost like it was hot potato there for a second. And it was going to be trouble just by the clearance that was not executed properly by Robert Morris. It kind of flew back inside the box. Here's Ogara. Well, heavy touch there, but skill, skill, skill check in the middle of the pitch. Yep. 17 and a half remaining in the first half. The Deacons with 10 shots. Robert Morris with two. The Deacons leading 1 0. Here's Kojima. He was eyeing on Forbes. Here's Forbes again, Gilly dropping back to kind of help out. And look who's off and running is Swallen. And Swallen lets that one ride out of bounds. Ball was just a little off target, but if we watched that movement, Forbes did such a good job with a high starting position, played that first ball back, cut into the middle to open up space behind him for Swallen. The game for Robert Morris, number 11, Logan Gilly, number 15, Kyler Miller, and number 22. Chase Nolan Oliver will come in for the Demon Deacons. Nolan Hutter comes in. For RMU. Logan Gilly in. The brother of Chase Gilly. Forbes will get a rest. He's had a busy night too. I'd be exhausted. How many times that ball has been sent to the left channel and said, all right, Forbes, figure something out, create something. I think I've counted at least five times. <laughs> And he's done well with pretty much each one. And he didn't look like he was exhausted no. uh, on the sideline. He's still young and he can run all night. Swallet, he's got space. He's got an option, Garino. 
Marino dancing inside the 18, waits for his support. Wait, his support is Cummins, and Cummins gets tripped up. And guess who? And Nasser Duran again, just getting a toe in. He does all the intangibles. Travis Smith Jr. steps in as we move to 15 and a half remaining. Chase Oliver has come in for Forbes. Bad news for that outside right back. As Chase Oliver also has very good wheels and very quick. So no drop off. It's Baba Niang. One, two from Garino. Niang trying to serve that one in with his right boot. And it was blocked. And here comes Robert Morris. What? And a tip there on that tackle by Travis Smith Jr. And the recovery was just about as impressive. That sent in and knocked away by Prince Impanza. Very, very nervy moments there for that back line as Gilly, he was right on it and he was ready to send that one to that far stick. He didn't have options. He did, but that recovery pace <laughs> just did, did not allow those options to come to fruition. Darren Gray, the senior from Hawthorne Woods, Illinois. He will take the corner, the first corner for the Colonials. Sends an outswinger. Set up. Very quick release. That was a fantastic idea by Gilly. Well, he's used to scoring goals. I mean, do you, do you know how many goals that kid had <laughs> in high school? 106 career goals. And his brother, who had more than he did, had 134 <laughs> so between the two. <laughs> that's just too many goals. Man. Not bad that from is, the Gilly family. <laughs> Spent one year at UNCG. Going over to Robert Morris last year and staying on for Coach Jonathan Potter. Reno spinning and dancing. But Coach Potter really not scared. I mean, this is a testament to him as a coach and what he does for his program. He must be from Winston-Salem, not scared at all. And even if number three beside the name, they're going to go straight at you. As Sears also in, Sears can create a lot of havoc and Trying to send that one up for Baba Niang, but it's cleared away. Well, Ty, you mentioned the Gilly brothers, but you've got three total North Carolina prospects from this team. So, I mean, this is the homecoming for them, and, and homecoming you play like you're at home, right? Perez comes in, will replace Ogara. With a one nil lead, Coach Muse, can kind of show off the depth. We'll see. It's on display that there's not much of a drop off, at least in my opinion. I could be wrong. <laughs> I think your eyes work just but, fine, Ty. <laughs> <laughs> just by going by talent, it's there's not a drop off at all, and that's that's really a core tenant of this program is you know next man up, and and there, as we both know, there's several guys that have come in, several guys in this bench that could be starters. Also missing Sidney Paris tonight. He is not a World Cup qualifier for Puerto Rico. Good throw ball, Sears. Flag stays down. Sears trying to send that with his left. Garino somehow escapes, goes through the wickets and in, and Garino is on the scoreboard, and the Deeks have number two. G Garino pounced on that. You talk about immediate punishment for a mistake, and it was just, just a slight mistake, not a clean touch. Wow, Garino, that's what makes you a striker, right? Being at the right place at the right time. And he was lurking. He was able to spit it right through, and it goes into the back of the net. Let's see how this developed. Well, the best strikers have a hunger for the goal, and he was right there anticipating the mistake if it came through. Right place, right time. He was there to finish. But again, the off the ball movement, if he doesn't continue that run and anticipate there could be a mistake there, that goal doesn't happen. Thought it was underneath two wickets, but one wicket and just went to the side of Gorgani. 
not much he can do about that. So it's 2 0 in favor of the home side. With about 11 and 11 and a half to go. Garino once more. And it's Chase Oliver has moved over to the right side, double teamed. Another brilliant play by Chase Oliver. Saw the double team immediately played it off the defender and out for another corner. Short option was Swallen in space. Swallen sending it. Swallen. Wow, and that one that had one a lot of missed. fire behind it too. It was in the right location. Lake Forest, 101 wins, 16 losses, and eight ties here at Spry under Coach Muse. It's a nice little karate kick there <laughs> in the air. Hey, whatever it works, works, right? It works. <laughs> the bad news is Wake Forest now building again towards that final third. Perez keeps the switch over to the right side. Perez again. Going from right back to the left side. Here's the eight. Sears. And the intention of playing Baba Yang. Travis Smith Jr. plays that safety valve all the way up past that halfway line. And Robert Morris sees it. They want to exploit that, try to use the speed. And Wake Forest quickly to get back. There's Perez. Under 10 minutes to go. Cedric, your thoughts so far on this one? Wake Forest is really knocking it right now, and they've really put their stamp on this game. I mean, one thing that really stands out is you simply cannot make mistakes against this team. They will immediate, there's immediate karma. They will immediately punish you and pounce on it. And good teams win the games they're supposed to win. And it's clear that they, they want to finish this game off. They're not holding back. They're not waiting for Friday. It's go time. They definitely decided to hit go time, hit the green light. As soon as the first whistle was sounded. But by no means, Robert Morris is backing away and trying to clog up the sink. They still want to play their game. And they've done a good job. You know, they've had some success. They've had some dangerous attacks, a few shots. Really, right now, they have to solve the middle. There's too much space. They're getting a little disjointed. We mentioned that the press and making sure we're staying together. But they have to solve the middle of this pitch and slow Wake Forest down a little bit. Deacons with 11 shots, five are on frame. And the Colonials with two shots. They're not on frame, but uh, they have a couple good moments inside that final third. Not as of late, but they have kind of got a taste of it. Of course, Wake Forest playing without Garrison Tubbs, but Travis Smith Jr. What a turn. Freshman, but uh, already plays like a vet. Kentucky Gatorade Player of the Year. Good probing pass. Swallen. He gave him that much time to cook. He's able to reach over it and connect with Chase Oliver. One, two, Chase Oliver in some space. Sends a good ball and a bicycle or a scissor kick. My goodness, from Baba Niang. That was almost the world. That up. Our old Mitchell had a scissor kick last year. And Baba Niang tried to send one into the top corner. Here, Niang dancing inside the 18, taken away the Colonials. Can't quite clear it here. Swallen. Garino tries to play Oliver just a little too far out in front. Let's take a look at this again. As Niang, yeah, that was more of a scissor kick rather than a bike. But he just missed it. If he if he makes clean contact there. 
Now, one thing we really see with Swallen, he's playing quarterback right now. He's, he's so effective, just like a quarterback uses his eyes to look a defender off and, and, and draw a safety to a certain part of the field to open up a different part. We saw that ball he just played, actually three in a row he just played in a different series. So effective for getting this Wake Forest offense going, especially in front of the box. He'll also do, speaking of quarterback, he'll do an Aaron Rodgers, a no-look pass, too. He's got a little Aaron Rodgers flair to him. Don't be surprised if you see one of those tonight. He's got Aaron Rod Rodgers' coolness to him as yeah. well. <laughs> well. Robert Morris, 4-3-4 four, and four overall. 2-2-2 and two, two and two away, but riding a four-game unbeaten streak. It's like Coach Jonathan Potter said, they... They refuse to get beaten. Maybe trailing 2-0 here. Bob and Yang may make it three. As he looked to send that one straight in the middle, had two targets with Oscar Sears and Garino. Nicky Mancia has come in. Just incredible work rate from this Wake Forest defense. They work so well for each other. Five and a half, under five and a half to go in the first half. And it's been all Wake Forest. And Robert Morris has seen a little of that final third. And is not shy at all, even trailing 2-0. Good step. Tough turnover there. Just your mind has the idea what it wants to do, but the foot just can't quite follow. That happens a lot, especially when you get older. It <laughs> took the, took the <laughs> words out of my mouth. <laughs> Perez able to turn. Niang has his hand up. He'll get it. Watch this overlap by Mancia. It is Niang dances right foot. Here's the shot. He sent it low and away. And couldn't quite get that laces through it. But he has the distance. He actually surprises me more and more with the distance, especially the last Hail Mary shot against your Duke Blue Devils last year where he sent it just right by almost like 45 yards out and almost went in the upper V. Old Mitchell is relaxing on the bench after he scored his ninth goal. Bobby Muse has gone to his bench to bring out some more weapons and show off his depth. Cummins laying that one across. Tough ball to play, a little extra touches. Trying to clear it, but Perez gobbles it up and with 320 remaining, Deacons not laying back. They want that third goal here in the first half. Here's Perez. Niang. Went through the wickets this time looking for Sears. And it was read well by Afawobu. And Mancia goes up and over. Good sportsmanship. Uh, display there by Nolan Hutter, the grad senior from Dayton University. Played four years before coming back home to Robert Morris. Sears. Here's a shot from Perez that was laid right there in front of him by Chase Oliver. The Deacons working on that long distance shots, or long distance shots a couple of times here in the closing minutes of the first half. They've just kind of scuffed them a little bit. I see some finishing drills in their future. <laughs> under two. Played back to Alvin. Hey, hey. 
Alfin does such a good job on distribution with his feet. Re really trusted by this back line. It makes it harder for teams to shut to, to really press them because you, the goal of the press is you want to cut down one of the center backs and send them to one side of the field and try to isolate them. But when you've got that keeper as an outlet who's so good with his feet, it makes it that much harder. Last, you saw those the stats in the last couple matches. And sometimes he's been bored. That's why he's asked a couple times his center backs to play it back to his support so he could just have some kind of action, get his, his blood circulating. You gotta show him some love. Yeah. Takes care of them. Give, give him some touches. Keep him involved every now and then. <laughs> Here's Chase Oliver. And is he inside the box? Chase Oliver is pleading with the official that he is. It's gonna be a yellow card. Oliver just got taken out from the back. He's still in shock that the point of the spot was not shown. <laughs> and that little grimace too, like, wow. So, the, what, what else do I have to do to get a call? Look. Once again, great job continuing that run. And uh, he was close, but I think it's the correct call. Looks like those feet were right outside the box. So let's say this is a short corner with 33 seconds on the clock, but stopped. And Swallen will take it just on the edge of that 18, although they're going to take a look at it. So they're going to take a look at it, Cedric. And I think uh, Chase Oliver may want his case here to at least get the official to look at it. Well, he fell in the box, and it looks like those two feet were still planted right outside from that quick replay we just saw. Uh, you also got to give him credit. That is a soccer fall. It you is. Know? When you feel any contact, Go you down. have to kind of sell it again. And uh, I think he's did a good job. He's been taught well. And we'll see what uh, the official says. Car play is under review for the award. We'll get another good look at it. So, what do you think, sir? I mean, obviously, I think the, the call stands. The box, yeah, but but it's close. It, it, I mean, he it, fell several feet into the box. Well, right now you're past the defender, so yeah. once you you're inside the 18 and you get tripped up, you're going to think that it is, you know, a, a PK, which. Yeah. I understand why Chase and really, Oliver was smiling. That last trailing foot that got caught up was right outside, but it, it was close. It was worth a look. That's the right call. After Let's see what, what QB1 can do with this one. That's right. Let's see what calm, cool, and collective Jake Swallen can do here with a short corner just on the edge of the 18. Diagonal pass shot by Travis Smith Jr. off the deflection. First, it was intended by Oscar Sears. 24 seconds. Wake Forest still trying to get that third goal. Swallowing with the service. And it's cut out. Robert Morris just trying to get it away from that final third of the Demon Deacons. Swallowing wants a little bit more fun. Sends it right back in. Perez. Here's Sears. Sears. Got it caught up in that chamber. Couldn't quite release it. A couple times they've kind of looked up before it's been released off the laces. Well, let's get this thing started. In the second half, we are underway with the Demon Deacons leading by a two spot. Ruled by Roald Mitchell and Leo Garino. Welcome back to Spry Stadium. Deacons already with their 10th win of the season. Looking for their 11th victory. They finished last season with 14 wins, but bowed out early in the first round of the NCAA tournament, which still sits in the back of their mind. And Ty, one immediate adjustment I see from Robert Morris. This looks like more of a true 4-3-3 as they're coming out with a little more horsepower up front. Jonathan Potter, a Demon alum from R.J. Reynolds, so he's got a little demon pride in him. He's not going to sit back. He's going to try to put a little grit in this one. Also has a little uh, more incentive. He's going up against his former club coach, 
Coach Bobby Muse. And talking to Jonathan Potter, which is uh, interesting for a kid that I coached for one year, but he started coaching youth soccer at 16 years old at a uh, league called the Optimist League, which is a league that I started in here in Winston-Salem. So at 16, he was already coaching kids. So that tells you how much he loved coaching. Also speaks to his leadership capabilities. Yeah, yeah that's going to be tough. Coaching, what, eight-year-olds? Yeah. It's hard for me to keep my <laughs> seven-year-old on to listen, but eight-year-olds. Oh, good through ball. That was maybe intended for Cooper Flax to run on. But a fun conversation with... Jonathan Potter, his new address at Robert Morris. Too far out in front away from Ogara. Swallen getting some extra reps too. And Robert Morris is throwing extra numbers on this press. They are not going to back down and make it easy. And we talked about halftime adjustments and speaking to, to Coach Potter, reading this game very accurately. We talked about the press. Yep. Look how together they are. Completely different look than in the first half. And this created some immediate turnovers. Coming out of the locker room in the second half with some fight. Got to love that if you're Coach Potter. Especially with what lies ahead. And crucial matches in the Horizon League. A date with Oakland. So there's a good possibility if they get some good results that you know, they could climb the table and laugh at uh, those who thought they were picked ninth in the conference in the beginning of the year as Flax they're, they're giving Wake Forest some trouble building out of the back right now with this press very well organized they put an extra number up to bring more depth and they're cutting off the lanes, and they're bringing pressure. And Dron was on the back of Cooper Flax. Gets called for that foul. Uh, here's Flax in the half space. What a slide tackle by Swallen. Tough play out of the back. That was a great, <laughs> courageous ball right down the middle. He almost felt the tension there by Hunter when that ball was played. Like, oh, I don't want this. Just clear it. Hunter did a good job of getting it out of the 18. Not a crucial turnover. Forbes somehow keeps it at his feet. Tough play back is Ogara did not quite sniff out. And Robert Morris player was right there. McLaughlin that was read that well, well. Well read, extremely well, but that you gotta be careful. That's a square ball right in the middle, a square no look right in the middle of the pitch. It's in the blind side of his rear view. It's also where you have to rely on communication too. Exactly. Touch back to Swallen. Swallen looks up. Center of the pitch. He's trying to play Flax, taken away. The Colonials. And that was a drawn, getting another boot in. Breaking up play in the center mid. Gilly, nice one touch back. As the Colonials 
trying to create and move close to that final third, but have been ushered back. Rotation on this ball. Robin Moore's team looks much more aggressive, stepping into space, closing down passing lanes, stepping in front of players. Not that they were timid in the first half, but definitely an increased level of aggression right now. When we talked to Coach Muse earlier today, and he said that he wants his team to never settle at all. Always keep fighting, keep having some hunger, and. And with a 2-0 lead, you can't settle either, even against the Robert Morris team, which I think you, you, you know, pretty much have dominated. And I thought that was a great life lesson. Of, of, of when, you're on, when you're on top, when you have momentum, keep going. You know, continue to better yourself. Don't, as you said, don't settle. Don't, don't be apathetic. Well, that just goes a lot about uh, Coach Bobby Muse, because I even asked him once. Said if you won the national title, undefeated, won the won the national title, would you be happy? And he goes, I don't know. <laughs> I said just for one night. What? Said I don't know. <laughs> that just shows you. That's what reason this program's been so successful. Continue raising the bar. You know, continue continue pushing for excellence. And only, only accept and expect the best from yourself and your teammates. And that's really how this program is built. Now with 14 wins last season, how the Deeks kind of fizzled at the end. I know, again, we talked about 14 wins. That's huge. A lot of people would you know, pay their, use their entire savings to get that many wins. But, uh, not sure what that call is, but you think of that which we got went straight for the body. But but yeah, I mean, you know, you just you think about the, just the fashion that Ohio State came in here and beat Wake Forest three nil. Once you go into the locker room, I don't know if you're a player, Cedric, and then maybe even as a coach like you are, that sits that 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 not only stings it makes you furious and it stays there for a while just because you had a home match you, you get shut out three nil against a team that uh, you were pre predicted to, to beat so coach muse might not say it but that is some more motivation for this season and on top of many other motivational factors but well it should fuel you you know, which it clearly has with the intensity and the way this this team has approached every match. But you're right, that that sticks with you. And you know, after losing any match, I think any player wants to get back on the pitch as soon as possible. You know, so with this team, it's get is you know not looking forward and looking ahead, but they got to get back to that point to resolve that. Coach Muse has said many times he. He prefers not to have Thanksgiving with his family. He prefers to be <laughs> with his team, which means that they're having a run into the tournament. <laughs> Still a lot of work to go, but the Deacons on their streak and what they've done defensively. A very, very wicked team, just like that shot that went after. One of our camera guys. I think that was Jerry up there, almost got hit. No, no, from Jerry Thomas was almost uh, knocked off his perch. <laughs> Has to stay alive back there, especially when head on a swivel. Wake, <laughs> Wake Forest is firing that direction. Foul called. It rattled his Forbes. I think he first initially wanted to give it off to somebody on the left, but the pocket was op open, said, all right, let me give it a rod. And we saw this team test from the outside a few times early in the first half. This looks real promising, and it is drilled in the side net, and it's Jelani Forbes. 
an assist, and now a goal. And he spent the entire first half building up to that, beating his man down that left flank. He had a couple of shots, a couple of crosses. That one's just a beautiful 1v1 effort. I'm going to beat my man, and I'm going to put this in the corner of the ball. Not the ball, goal. Forbes. He's been all over the pitch tonight. He's been known for assists, but he has a knack for finishing, too. Don't get that misconstrued as he lines that one up with his left foot. And there is no doubt about it. It's the Deacons lead 3-0. Forbes was his third goal of the season in the 57th minute. To go along with six assists on the season. Quite the points for Jelani Forbes, but uh, we still got a lot of soccer to go. So much versatility and depth in this Wake Forest team. They can attack you in so many different ways. And Forbes, who's, he actually prefers to play in the back. That's his like normal position on the outside back, but and of course he's a weapon in the outside wing. Enjoy your youth. Yeah. One, one day you won't be able to slide up and you'll be forced to play in the back. So do it do it while you can, right? Well, he started his career at Wake Forest on the outside wing. Then he went back to his normal position. I said, which position do you like the most? He said, I like being in the back. I said, man, times have changed. <laughs> you, just, you would play in the back or the front, you say immediately the front. But uh, just how the evolution of the game of soccer, I mean, the outside backs get involved in the attack anyway. They're the cool guys now, yeah. you know? Back in the day, you know, us defenders, we started up top and we got relegated <laughs> to the back. But now it's a different game, to your point. The game has grown too much where, I mean, these guys are so versatile. There's so many guys that they can play different positions and, and, and the backs are so much more skillful in general. Well, Swallin trying to put on a Maradona move. Got knocked down to the ground. Gilly got a piece of him. I just think that Forbes just likes that much space to run, you know, going from one end line to the other. And then when he's moved up to that outside wing position, he's kind of cuts the field in half. Well, even playing up top, he plays like an inverted winger. Yeah. Where he, he, when he receives it, usually starts at a high wide starting position and just uses his God given athletic ability to beat his man and get into the box as quickly as possible or play the good ball across. Definitely taken from the book of Machop Chop when he was here, just how very calm and at ease and confident he is on the ball, especially running down the touchline. It didn't matter you know, who they were playing. If Cho got it, it was guaranteed to at least be a service ball or maybe even a shot. And Wake does such a good job finding space behind the overload. I was watching Robert Moore slowly shift over and watching Forbes waiting out there for it. Mitchell was trying to do a little improv, did have some space and it was taken away. Deacons not hitting the cruise control yet. They lead 3 0. And Swallen has his wand out, but he's called for the foul. Travis Smith Jr. Cedric, your thoughts on him? This is a kid that's freshman. He, he did get a lot of reps in the beginning of the year because of Prince and Ponza wasn't 100%. But if I if you didn't know, if I didn't tell you he was a freshman, would you think he's a freshman? I would have no clue. <laughs> I mean, he's clearly stayed ready and he's prepared for the moment. He, he looks so comfortable out there. And the ball played well. Forbes high in the air, maybe searching for... <laughs> Our camera guy, Jerry Thomas, again. Oh, he was searching for that second goal, and that's a ball he normally plays and drives right across the six where he had two runs coming. But you can't blame him. He just scored quite the goal. Why not try for another one? Travis Smith, Jr. just saw a shot of him, freshman from Louisville, Kentucky. I've trained with the first team USL Academy contract with Lou City.
Timothy Way is one of his favorite players of all time. I'm sure I remember his dad. <laughs> yes, but his uncle, George Way. Yeah. Way. So those stats. You're, get, you're getting old, Ty. I know, man. <laughs> I actually, you know, I did get to see Tim Way's first international cap, which was in Raleigh. Now that was a unique moment. First time he came on, knew all about him, and he walked on. Yeah, you talk about a guy with change of pace and ability mm -hmm. to get behind the defense and open up a game. Well, he's got Wea as his last name, so he's got something. Cer certain yep. pedigree yeah, and expectation right. there. Didn't have much option, so he decided to pinch in. Still rushing in. And he's on the opposite field and still chasing that one down. Charging hard on uh, our guy, Anas Hadron. And sometimes Walent is kind of overlooked with his speed because uh, that kid does not lack that speed in you know the speed department he is fleet of foot he will drive outside backs nuts just like this kid as Forbes knocks it off the defender goes out of bounds it'll be another corner Forbes continuing to cook and he is as much as he has ran he, he just seems to be it's like Not all, at all beat. Always ready to do it again. Always ready for the next run. And he's, he's a constant weapon. And he has to stay ready because they move this ball so quickly. And as soon as they find the outlet on the outside. Well, he'll go out and take a breather. We'll get a chance to see Jeffrey White, another talented freshman from Tampa, Florida. A lot of good things about this kid. Coach Muse really, really likes his work ethic. I mean... He wants to learn everything and anything he can. Curler by Cooper Flax. Swallen puts it right back into the mixer, and the flag is up. And the side judge was already getting ready to raise it on Prince and Ponza as he got behind the back lot. Press still not easing up. Good job by Robert Morris, able to somehow find that outlet pass to Gray. But the Deeks have, have really made that back line work tonight. UA. Uwe's dad actually played at Alabama A&M from 93 to 96, was drafted in the second round of the 97 MLS college draft by Kansas, the Kansas City Wizards, which is now sporting Kansas City. They were the first Wizards. They had the best jerseys in the game yeah, for a while. Or, or Good long ball. Here's Jeffrey White into space, right foot, and there it is. What a goal, Ty. What Jeffrey a goal. Jeffrey White. You talk about finding the space behind the overload. What a great driven ball with just enough pace on it, and what a first touch by White. First touch is into the box by his man. Picked his corner, finished it. It's a great goal. You can see the entire team coming over to congratulate him. This already as a freshman, the impact he has on this team. That they love this kid to death. And the freshman from Tampa, Florida, knocks it. The fourth goal of this contest with the right foot, and it is a no doubter. He knew that one was going to ripple the net. Oh, he, the he knew it as soon as he took that quality first touch. His first goal of his season. And the ball in had just the right amount, right amount of spin on it. Just settle down. Perfect touch. Great finish. First of many for that kid right there from Tampa, Florida. Jeffrey White makes it 4-0. And 
the Deacons can now hit cruise control. And just under 26 minutes remaining. Julian Kennedy will come in for Rob Mitchell. Emilio Ponce will come in for Vlad Wallent, and Kojima comes in for Liam Ogara. And Coach Muse still doesn't look happy. <laughs> he doesn't. If I didn't know any better, I would think the score is reverse. But that's a sign of a good coach. He's always coaching, always looking to make his team better. As you said, they're not going to settle. And from the years that I have spent covering Wake Forest, Coach Muse always makes it easy for me to pick some time to talk to him even with his busy schedule and uh, at first I was intimidated by him but after our first conversation it's, he's just been just a great character altogether. he does have a high level intensity he does it's also a funny intensity going <laughs> yes. to, I, I highly recommend you go to some of their training uh, times because it is it is Hilarious, and it's also it is a roller coaster of emotions. I'll tell you that you'll feel really tense, and then you'll start laughing, and then you're like, I don't know what to do next. <laughs> but, but he's my type of coach. Definitely have to keep your head on the swivel. Here's a long throw by Robert Morris. Still working on their offense to at least try something, and a deflection off a of Cummins foot goes into the net and get pass Trace Alf and that goal uh, shot by Kai McLaughlin will give a little bit of life to Robert Morris and something that many teams have not been able to accomplish that Rick is scoring a goal against this defense and it was a fortuitous bounce for Robert Morris but still Got past Trace Alpin. Oh, and it's a shame for, for Alpin. He's played so well that he gives it up right before. But you need a little luck to score against these guys. Just an unfortunate deflection. Not much you can do about that. And you got to give credit to Trace. Absolutely. Excuse me, uh, to Bo Cummins. He immediately put his hand up. Yeah, my bad. Well, it's, it's the opposed to blame on Nate, blame yeah. somebody else. Culture of accountability. Yep. Immediately recognize it, take credit, and move on. Let's get better. That is a good quality to have. Sometimes it's been overlooked. There is Jake Swallen. Wants to get back that lead, and he does. Sends it up QB1. to Julian Kennedy. QB1. QB1. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another goal for the Demon Deacons. It's 5-1. to one. That, uh, that four-goal cushion is back within seconds. They say the most dangerous period after a goal was scored is the immediate five minutes. It didn't take five minutes. A, a minute later, right back, this counterattack is so lethal, Ty. QB1, one heck of a wide receiver. Is Julian Kennedy, all he had to do, left foot, one touch and bang it in. And Swallow QB1 took the contact there too. And, and such a good job drawing his defender in, waiting to the last possible moment to make his teammate look better, played him perfectly in the space. That gives Kennedy now four goals on the season. And Julian Kennedy also another weapon off the bench. So a kid that comes off the bench, may not get a lot of minutes. We saw him a little bit in the Carolina game, but he's got four goals. Cedric, I also tell you that one of the leading scorers last season, Oscar Sears, who doesn't get that much playing time. We didn't see him at all against Carolina. That's another weapon you have off the bench. I mean, just, just so, so many there. weapons. Yeah. Twenty-three and a half remaining. And there's no doubt about this one, Wake Forest in full command, five to one, with a new keeper in. And their freshman, also from the Florida area, who comes in, replacing Trace Alfin. And a stoppage of play, a little chat with our guy that's Anasa Drawn and Kojima, who is down a little paint. Kojima looks just shaking up a little bit, the senior. 
huge leader, big time influence on this team. I can't say enough about him. He really just, just it's like the first time I saw this kid play a scrimmage. He was playing outside back position and the kid was motoring in line or in line to in line. And it was like Forbes. I mean, just, just at a thousand miles an hour and did not look tired at all. And I was like, wow, who is this kid? And he could play anywhere. He's a Swiss Army knife. Yeah, he's the, the picture and definition of versatility. He does so much. We mentioned in the first half, he's box to box. But he can kickstart the offense, but also makes him hold defensively. He's typically the first guy back in the middle if they lose it. Such an important pivotal piece of this team. So new keeper for Wake Forest is Devin Armstrong, the redshirt freshman from Palm Harbor, Florida. So your place is Alvin. Nice flick on and a good turn by Uwe. Uwe still with it and being wrestled is Dubrov. And somehow that ball is still hanging around close to the penalty mark. And now Wake Forest come, will come out with it and try to work their numbers down. Ponce. That ball just stayed there, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It's like trying to find a mouse in your house. You just keep looking and looking and looking. He's looking down. Battle of will. Good analogy right there. there. Yeah, I like yeah. that one. Yeah. Tell that to our producer. <laughs> Mouse in the house. Mouse in the house. Escribano into space. Escribano will take it. Here's Kennedy. Deacons leading 5-1, but they don't look they don't look at it at all. They look like this is a you know, one goal difference between the two teams. Getting back, Ponce, the transfer from Boston College. is also electric and they bring him off the bench. He was a starter at Boston College. He's come in to the program here at Wake Forest. See his stats from last year. One goal, three assists, very shifty too. So the rich gets richer by bringing in Ponce, and uh, he's fighting for minutes to get on the pitch. It's Bo Cummins. Left foot shot. They lifted it just a little high, still aiming for our buddy Jerry Thomas. <laughs> he is not safe up there. Bo Cummins, kind of a fadeaway shot that he sent that one high and off to the left. Perez re-enters, and Swallen goes out. That's the type of leader you want. Look how dirty his jersey is. QB1's done that's his right. job tonight. That, that's how I want my center midfielder to look like after a match, even a midweek non-conference matchup. Just how he were recovered from his injury, he missed all of last season. I mean, he scraps to the end. Coach Jonathan Potter looking on. Winston-Salem native. Back at home. Or his former home. And there's Jeffrey White surging ahead. And he gets knocked out. If he doesn't get fouled, I think he's running through the entire team. The goal, his change of pace is just unreal. There's a card given to Gabe Norris. And Norris with four goals on the season for him. He's one of the leading scorers for Robert Morris. And he's a big physical presence. You know, Coach Potter really talked about the role he plays in the midfield and, and, and matching up with, with your other players' most physical midi typically and shutting it down. And last year he played more of a defensive role sitting back, and this year he's played up a little bit. It's paid off because he's been able to knock in four goals. Against Purdue, Fort Worth, St. Bonaventure, Bucknell, and VMI. He was a kid that uh, thought about leaving too until he talked to Jonathan Potter and he said, I really like his vision of the program, where he wants to direct it. And, uh, you know, again, this is 
Horizon League preseason. They, they didn't think much of Robert Morris. They said ninth. And they're right in the hunt to possibly get number one on the table. And I know they're not going to come away tonight with a W, but what I've seen from this team, the resilience and what he said, what Coach Potter said was they refuse to lose. I mean, that is right on display here, even with Robert Morris trailing 5-1. to one. Uh, This is a good team. There's a lot of talent. They, they play the right way. They work for each other. Very talented team. They just happen to come up against a buzzsaw in Wake Forest in that. I always think it's amazing by first-year head coaches and what they can do on their first year because of just the you know the, the task they have in front of them Cedric you know you're going in and you're taking on a, a group that you never seen before you might know some of the players and then you're trying to sell your goods to them to stay right especially with a transfer portal here and you have to sell it and then you also have to instill your type of program and then not to mention you came in in December <laughs> so it's like go you don't yeah, it's, it's, it's a daunting task. And as you mentioned with the transfer portal in this new age where you have to keep guys engaged and, and, and guys are constantly looking for greener passers in, in, in certain scenarios, that's a tough job to come in at that stage in the recruiting cycle. And, you know, hats off to him for, for galvanizing this group, bringing in a few transfers, keeping them together. And as you mentioned, they've overachieved thus far and still have quite a bit of the season left. Overachieved by other standards, not by theirs. I think they they, they always knew they would they would uh, be right where they are right now. The future is bright for Robert Moores. Jeffrey White trying to come up with a brace. Here is Julian Kennedy in a quick release that just went left of that post. It's five to one. We've just under sixteen minutes to go. This is how we got here. Starts with Forbes outside, playing the ball across the box, which he does. Punishing for mistakes. Again, Forbes in that wing. And then White with the amazing touch, slotted it in. A little bit of kick save that uh, Coach, or excuse me, Bo Cummins was not expecting. And right within seconds, Swallen says, I got you, man. I got you. Let's go get it yeah, back. Let's get it back. And 66th minute, wasn't even a minute. In 67th minute, Julian Kennedy gives the Deeks that four-goal cushion again. Nicky Mancia has returned onto the pitch. Dubroff, who is highly recruited, number 34, out of Texas. Chance to see him, and there's Gilly going up against Mancia. And Dubrov just trying to clear it. Great work by the Colonials as Ood a good did ball. way up in the air. Almost came down with it, just decided to take off a little too early. As Ude went high in the air, but went over his head. Still looked very, very good on that setup. Alec Kennison comes in. California kid. Will Cummins will go out, get a rest. Alec Kennison will come in. J.P. Mobuthia comes back in for Robert Morris, as well as Nolan Hutter. Robert Moore's first in goals scored in the in the Horizon League, second in goals allowed. Robert Morris, if you're unaware, is located in the great town of Moon Township, Pennsylvania. Alec Kinnison. He knows a famous alum from Robert Morris. All you hip head, hip, hip hop heads is Wale. Huh? Wale, as the kids say. Yeah, Wale, as the kids say. Hippity hop, right? You don't stop. 
I know that one. Yeah, I, I did not know. I didn't either. I looked it up. I was like, "Wow!" I didn't know, know he was. I knew he was a DC kid, but I didn't know he worked to. It's a great Robert trivia Morris. question. <laughs> Big Washington sports fan, so you know he's got a lot of character. <laughs> <laughs> Kennedy tried to split the double team. He'll go down, and the official will bring it back for a free kick. For the Demon Deacons, and sandwiched between two defenders, and the yellow card will come out for Afuwubo. Afuwubo does not quite agree, and we might have a case here. This is just between two, and oh, he got help. That's why he got elbow. Yeah, I think he took the brunt of that one. We might get a chance to see. Baba Niang show his distance here. And you won't. It'll be Oscar Sears. Ponce. Kennison calling for it. Flag stays down. Kennison. Thought about penetrating into that 18. Played it back. Here's Ponce again. Under 11 and a half in the Deacons. No intentions of slowing this attack down. Julian Kennedy, these kids who have come on off the bench, of course they're going to play 100%, maybe 110. As Mancia. Twenty-two shots, Cedric for Blake Forest, nine on frame, and of course five in the back of the net. Get across, get across, get across. And still searching for more is Oscar Sears. Wanted to play that out to the left for Bob and Yang. He let that one ride. And we we've seen it come from so many different different ways. We've seen the counter attack. We've seen the methodical build and getting expansive and finding a winger and coming back across. We've seen. You know, straight through the middle, swallowing. I mean, th th this team is just so versatile and, 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 you know, really a Swiss Army knife of different options and how they can beat you. Well, don't forget, of course, Coach Muse and the Demon Deacons didn't want to overlook Robert Morris, but now with the five to one lead. You can start thinking about Friday night and that's gonna be a huge matchup. It's gonna be tough when you, you got uh, talented teams night in, night out in the ACC. And we showed the ACC championship. And that's, again, I've said this, and you would agree, too. It's probably the hardest tournament to win, more more so than the national title. Absolutely, and it's only going to get harder with what's coming in next year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I asked Coach Carlos Samuano about that. He said, because he was constantly saying, like, yeah, every year with ACC, I mean, and you have no time to have a learning curve, especially when you bring in these transfer por portal guys. And he said, then now you add Stanford, Cal, and SMU. <laughs> He's like, give me a break here. Like, I don't know. I'm not going to get much sleep. I didn't say that, but I'm sure he would. <laughs> not get much sleep. I wouldn't if I was a coach. No. But, uh, yeah, Notre Dame will be in town on Friday night. And Notre Dame has a fantastic season. They are the leader in the other division. The two division leaders went forth to Notre Dame and... Coach Bobby Hughes will welcome in his friend, or only his friend at the time, Chad Riley, what he's done at Notre Dame. A former player for the Irish, now taking over the reins. 
top 10 program that made the run at the College Cup two years ago. They plan to try to get back. That ball's played well off the corner. Chase Oliver has returned. Remember the uh, preseason picks coming into this this year and where they had Notre Dame. I was joking with Notre Dame's head coach. I don't think maybe they just didn't see your roster or they knew what, what you had coming back because going from what the team they had last year and what they were going to bring back, I was they immediately circled Notre Dame as that is a dangerous team. Oh, they're beyond dangerous. I mean, they, and they play as a team. You know, every you can you can tell they've been together for a while. Very comfortable. This is going to be quite the matchup with this Wake Forest team on Friday night. And then Wake Forest has to travel to Louisville in their last away game. And we saw Louisville in the beginning of the year. I still think, and I think you can agree with me, is that Louisville is a very dangerous team. They have a lot of athletes, a lot of speed. And, I mean, we saw them in September. We thought this team is going straight to the College Cup. There oh, is oh, no yeah. doubt about our, it. Our guy rode in the middle, just yeah. bouncing around. I mean, yeah, such, such, a, such a good team. I mean, and, and we can say that about so many teams. We can't understate how good this ACC is. They've kind of hit a hiccup, but... It's a team you, you don't want to take lightly just because of the talent they have on the pitch. They brought in a transfer from Army that's already a Mac Herman Trophy watch list player that just knows how to score goals. And turnover, here's Gilly. And look at the chase back by Mancia. And as Robert Morris can't by a break, they got one break with a ricochet off the foot of Bo Cummins, which result, resulted in the first goal and the only goal for the Colonials. But they just try to work into that final third. They want enough time to be able to send one across and they haven't been able to. As the outside backs, even straight off the bench, have swallowed them up. Mancia was the one that chased down Gilly on that channel. There's Perez, the two freshmen going back and forth with each other. And here's Kittison. We've hit five, almost five minutes remaining in this one. It's almost pretty much written in stone that this is going to get gonna send Wake Forest into the wind column again. I'd say this, one, this one's baked, but it's important how they finish this game because now is preparation for Friday. And how you finish is how you start. So they're definitely going to, we, we know Coach Bobby Moose's team is going to play for, for 90 minutes and they're not going to let up. They don't want to concede anything else. Dicks orchestrating another attack again. Garino, that one behind him. Here's a shot and right into the hands. He immediately snatched up to stop any chance from making it six to one. Well done by our crew tonight, our camera operators, my guy Carl Russell, Dave Fields of Dreams, Adam Ryan, Jerry Thomas, who's over there at the Crow's Nest. He's gotten, he's gotten tested over there a couple times. Kyle Ritchie on audio, Daniel, Daniel Rainwater, replay Blake Woodard, our graphics Peyton Hughes, our bug Everett Hutto, director Drew D. Mark Antonio, and of course, our producer Jay Christie. Drew, Drew D. Mark Antonio, excited about his fills. So he's been in a good mood. It's always good when he's in my ear and he's in a good mood. Of course, we got to go with our engineers, Wes Heileman and Hunter Grubbs, and of course, our executive director, executive producer. 
James Overstreet. Here's Gilly, and Gilly just goes a little wide. Good job by Armstrong coming off, closing down on that one. And Gilly, who is so used to scoring goals, just sprayed that one a little wide. Gilly did not miss that one by much. A good job getting himself open into space. A great through ball, and he picked his corner and just missed it. Man, that would have been nice for him. North Carolina kid scoring against Wake. Yeah, he's wasn't that far off. And they were, of course, we mentioned earlier, they were all ready to go to Appalachian State, follow Jason O'Keefe, and then Appalachian State. Unfortunately, their program dissolved, which I hope that they can get that one back. Up there in the mountains in Boone. So going from UNCG. So you think you're going to Appalachian State. You end up going to UNCG for one year and then go up to Pennsylvania, Robert Morris. Quite the journey. But really the flexibility the transfer portal gives these young men to to be able to, to end up in the right spot that you know both from an educational standpoint but also to continue their careers kennedy will not give up at all even with the clock ticking a minute and some change don't tell julian kennedy that he looks like he's ready for yeah. another 90. hey he does if Robert Morris can in the second half. come up with a consolation goal, another one, but he's offside, and offside flag goes up. And so that will stomp out that attack. Lucas Hammerley is coming in the outside winger on the left. That was in an offside position. And the finishing touches of this match for the Demon Deacons. With just 10 Seven, seconds remaining. Or it becomes official. Six, five, four, three, two. And that's it. That's the sound of the horn. 11 and 1 and 3 for the Demon Deacons on the year. They extend their current.